Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about Netflix's ill-conceived Q-Force. Yeah, we Q talked about it before. Yeah, Q-Force is in a overtly LGBTQ plus show that's a bunch of spies and it's basically... Well, it's the stereotypes. It's the stereotypes. Uh, yeah, it's there was a lot of blowback when they dropped the first trailer a couple months ago, and now that the screeners are out, people absolutely hate this show. It's mm -hmm. pretty much everything that people were saying it was going to be, and the the media outlets you would think would like this show uh, said no. It's a it's a pandering mess. We're not gonna we're not gonna give it a good review. Uh, it hasn't officially hit Rotten Tomatoes yet, but I found three or four mainstream media outlet reviews for it. Mm -hmm. I totally forgot it was a thing. Yeah, I forgot about it too, honestly. I just happened to see it uh, in my feed and I was like, oh my God, that thing came out, didn't it? Uh, what do people think? It's like, ooh, oof. Yeah, it didn't go the way they were hoping. No, it didn't. So we're going to talk about that. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We're over 232,000 subs. Thank you so much for the support. We do talk a lot about the animation industry and comics and uh, Disney and whatever interests us that day. And we did do a video on Q-Force a couple of months ago when they dropped the trailer and the reaction was overwhelmingly negative, mm -hmm. uh, especially from people that this show was supposed to represent. Yeah, because it's not representing. It's just it's just stereotyping. Mocking. This is like the snowflake and safe space of, of Marvel. I mean, it, it's supposed to be representative, but it comes across as you know, yeah, making fun of. Yeah, yeah, it is very much like uh, Snowflake and, and Safe Space, which ha they have yet to materialize. I don't think that book ever came Did out. Did it? I don't know. I'll have to double check, but I don't think the book ever came out. Uh, anyway, uh, a couple months ago, everybody was dunking on it. We're gonna we'll recap some of the uh, the feedback, and then we'll go to the actual reviews that are coming out today. Oh, it's Netflix. That explains everything. <laughs> that's pretty much it. I mean, like, I'm not trying to be a dick, but I mean, if, if any show that's coming up from Netflix, you know, is going to be a piece of garbage. You have Masters of the Universe Revelation where they, you know, overly went too far one way. And you have this show where they're overly going too far another way. And it's just like they're trying too hard to be, look how diverse and inclusive we are. They just keep forgetting to be actually diverse and inclusive and have good stories. Yeah, the Daily Dot covered it. A lot of people pulled their tweets down, but uh, I remember the backlash was fierce. I love this. Why are they trying to take their tweets down? Uh, I think they didn't like being called out by the Daily Dot. Oh. But basically, it has a very powerful Hello Fellow Kids energy featuring characters named Twink and Mary. Oh, I forgot about that. What was Twink? Yes. Twink. It feels dated and corny about as sophisticated as the 1990s ambiguously gay duo Oh my God, cartoons. I love the ambiguously gay duo. Uh, yeah, especially in light of successes like uh, Sensei, Queer Eye, and Shira. God, Shira. Yeah, Shira, which was not LGBT. I mean, it was from the creators, but the show itself was supposed to be about a kid's show, about a, a superhero, like superhero esque woman kicking ass. It had nothing to do with who she was sleeping with. We should we should do another comic called Women Kicking Ass. And we don't care who they're sleeping with. And we don't care. Yeah, in parentheses mm. or asterisks, and we don't care who they're sleeping with. That's they're just right. women kicking ass. That's all you need to know. So this was a couple months ago. People had forgotten the show existed. I forgot the show existed. Again, it's Netflix. They they crap out 30, 40 new shows mm -hmm. a week. So, you know, blink and you miss it. But here come the reviews uh, today. So the embargo must be up. Again, they haven't, as of recording this video, they have not hit Rotten Tomatoes yet. I went out and found them. But the first one I saw was uh, BuzzFeed. Netflix's Q-Force just isn't mm -hmm. it. Weighed down by derivative characters and dull gags about queerness, this latest Netflix comedy is uh, hit or miss. Um, yeah, so back in June, during the last weekend of Pride well, Month. That's right, because everybody, you know, rainbows on everything to try to up their sales. Rainbows on everything. The streaming giant released a teaser for the show about a diverse group of LGBTQ spies, an obvious attempt to get queer people hyped. Now, it's called Cashing In. Mm -hmm. Cashing In. Hey, Twink, Agent Mary says excitedly in the opening. Oh, hey, girl, Twink responds. That's my job, Daddy. Some Twitter users blasted the 40-second clip, said it showcased characters who leaned into harmful and outdated stereotypes. It totally did. Uh, yeah, because gay people love to be portrayed in a way where their whole personality trait revolves around being gay. Okay, you know what? Exactly. This is what we keep, being, we keep saying when it comes to these TV shows and these comics and all that other stuff. It's like if, if that is like the only thing about you is that then that's just, that's just sad. We've been saying that for a while. Um, now, the same people that, you know, 
shit on us for saying that are now quoting other people for saying the exact same damn thing. Now, it's interesting. One, one of the people that worked on the show, Alana Train, said that uh, I am one of the many queer artists who worked on the show. And boy, I can say with confidence the trailer is awful, but the reviews are not great. They said, uh, having seen all 10 episodes of the series created by Sean Hayes, Michael Schur, I can definitely say the initial trailer does not do the show any favors. Uh, it talks about how you know, he worked on Will and Grace, uh, The Office, Parks and Rec, uh, The Good Place. And those are all good shows. They are. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, Q Force isn't that good. And the few laughs that it did manage to escape my mouth as I watched weren't nearly as hearty enough to make me love it. The show has some charm. It is weighed down by uninteresting characters and dull jokes, in parentheses, which are really just random utterances of pop culture trivia like the names of actors, singers, and certain films. Oh my God, Family Guy, Big Bang Theory. Mm -hmm. um, the Star show Wars. <laughs> Star Wars. And though the show tries not to make its rainbow coalition of spies textbook stereotypes, it doesn't completely succeed, especially when it comes to its queer women characters. Oh, of course. Yeah, we're queer women characters. Is it a, no, was it a guy or was it a girl who wrote this? Uh, this is a guy. Oh, okay. This is a guy. Yeah, so anyway, uh, it goes on, and uh, they basically said, yeah, lots of gay jokes. They don't all land. It's not terribly good. That was BuzzFeed. You'd think BuzzFeed would. I just love would how they like quote it. the one person about we're more than just that. And we've been saying the same damn thing for like two or three years now, and we get so much shit for it. This is coming from Variety. If quality were measured in good intentions, Q Force might be the show of the year. Uh, Netflix. Good intentions. I, I didn't, from the trailer, it didn't seem, it seemed like more like. Mean. Yes. It seemed very mean. It was almost like they were roasting LGBTQ folks during Pride Month. Yeah. Like, hey guys, look at this show. Isn't this everything you wanted? Here it is. Boom. All in one package. And it's all stereotypes. And it's all stereotypes. People hate it. Netflix's new animated series sets out to tell a James Bond style espionage tale about a gay man, Steve Merriweather who's been marginalized from a fictionalized version of the CIA here called the AIA due to his sexuality. So, of course, we got to make it all about... Mm -hmm. can't just be that the character's a spy and just happens to be gay. Could you imagine if they just did a, a James Bond-esque type show and uh, instead of bagging women, he was bagging men? But that's literally... That's it. And then he goes back to shooting bad guys or yeah, whatever. People would actually probably watch that. Yeah. Like, it's... Mostly girls on Twitter. Probably. <laughs> Probably. I'm kidding. I'm serious. But no, I'm just saying, like, why is it, you know, uh, why is it every time they want to do a show about representation, they always make the representation front and center? Why can't it be like, this is a damn good spy show. By the way, he also likes dick. Mm -hmm. I know, but no, no, because it's all about that. Because they're they everything when it comes to the representation and diversity, they have to lead with that. They can't just like show by example. No, they have to announce it. They want all the trumpets and fanfare. They want their parade. They want, you know, everybody, they're like, you know, oh, bravo, how fantastic you are. They have to make sure you, you know, so you don't miss it. After years of isolation in the West Hollywood station, thanks to a homophobic agency chief, Gary Cole, I like Gary Cole, Steve gets vouched for by a mentor, Lori Met Metcalf. Of course it's a woman, yeah. Yep, and ends up taking his group of queer spies around the world. Yes, all of them uh, stereotypes. Mm -hmm. You know, judging by the trailer, but uh, yeah, they have to protect the plant from evildoers and to make room in the trade craft complex for queer people. Because, you know, that has that's a, how this works. That's you know, how this works. When you're on a super team, um, everybody has to be, you know, in the same, you know, either you're straight or you're not. You can't be a mix. You know, it has to be that everybody's either straight or everybody's, you know, not straight or they're whatever, and they have to hurry up, and, and you know you can't have that mixed together. No, no, you have to make room in your in your stronghold for more people that are like you. And, yeah. And just like you know, in the real world, you wouldn't be on a whole team full of people most likely that are just just like you. No, that would be like having like all one race of of people on a team or whatever, and and people be like, that's kind of racist that mm -hmm. you're. Like, oh, you're like the Avengers, but you're all, you're all. Well, this is Asian. okay because they you're have, they black. have, like, they, you know, a couple of girls on this, so it's fine. Oh, they're basically doing the all black Avengers in, in uh, Wakanda, right? Yeah, pretty much. That's what, that's yeah. what the next movie is. Pretty I much. Guess. Yeah. Anyway, we'll, we'll keep an eye on this. I think we're going to get a lot more reviews. These mm -hmm. are the early reviews. Uh, nothing on Rotten Tomatoes yet. Nothing on Rotten Tomatoes yet. Um, but I expect probably within the next day or two that there will be more reviews popping up. Uh, does not seem to be getting a very good reaction. Surprise! I mean, is anybody surprised by this, honestly? No. When you saw the trailer and you saw what shit it was and you saw the stereotypes, is anybody surprised that people don't universally love this? 
No. I mean, what did you expect? Better show. Well, I'm not you in general. Uh, yeah. Netflix so, mostly. Netflix. We expected a Netflix cartoon that will be forgotten about next week. And Netflix, you really need to stop this shit. I gotta tell you. Yeah. So we're gonna wrap it up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.